I've seen two kinds of affairs. And I've seen on the internet everything from two kinds of affairs to 10 kinds of affairs, depending on what you Google and what you research. But I think it comes down to two major things. One is the um, affair that's trying to fill a need and it's a one-time thing. So the person is missing something in a relationship. They're not normally somebody who would seek out a relationship and they would rather be, have a happy marriage. You know, I think most people go into marriage on their wedding day, they don't think, gee, I can't wait to get divorced. You know, everybody gets married and they're happy on that day. Uh, and they're excited and they're glad to be married. And well, somewhere along the way, that's not the case anymore. And they're looking for something typically missing. Some of their needs aren't being met, emotional, physical, sexual, whatever, or just intimacy and somebody talking to them, holding their hand, whatever it may be. And they start seeking that need somewhere else or an opportunity comes along where somebody offers to fill that need and they might not have considered going anywhere else until the opportunity popped up. Mm -hmm. And with the internet and social media, a little bit of texting seems safe. Like, well, I'm really not cheating because I'm just talking to somebody and, and starts draining energy from the relationship. Mm -hmm. And uh, so typically there's the one that's somebody trying to fill a, a missing need and it's probably not somebody who would cheat again. This is uh, trying to meet something that's missing. And it takes a lot of energy to, to do that in fear and you people are worried they're gonna damage their relationship or get divorced or whatever. And they, they probably are rather happy in their relationship otherwise. They love their kids, they'd like to be married, but they're missing something. Mm -hmm. And they're looking for this elsewhere. Eventually they get desperate. Then the other kind is, the person that just should never get married. They call them a dog or whatever it is. This is a person that they just like the thrill of the chase and they like they get excited about sneaking around and this is a game they play. And I think the one is fixable. The, the person that it's a one-time thing or it's to miss, fill a, a missing a gap in their needs with, if they can reconcile, if they can put things back together and trust can be rebuilt. I think that's much more fixable. The mm -hmm. second one, you're never going to fix. If, if the person is a cheater and they're a serial cheater, this is just their game and they just shouldn't be married, period. Mm -hmm. And I've, we've had cases like that. You know, mm -hmm. I, I had a woman come in, this is many years ago. It's the shortest marriage I've ever done. It was 17 days. It was a two week honeymoon and plus three days. And she came into the office three days after honeymoon and said, he cheated on the honeymoon. I don't know it i don't you have to be a dog if you're cheating on the honeymoon so but then she said he cheated on her when they were dating he cheated on her when they were engaged and she thought it would get better like well if i get engaged we make a commitment it'll stop and then if you get married it'll really stop well this is that thing about tigers not changing their stripes and and so you see that that pattern is more i think that's more rare the, the person that's just sort of a serial cheater and this is kind of a it's a personality defect or a psychological issue they have, that's not fixable. Those people are never going to stay married. So th those are the two kinds of infidelity really that we see. And then, like I said, with all the various flavors, it's, you know, internet cheating, exchanging videos, seeing people in person, there, you know, any number of those things. Yeah, because uh, I, I heard I was listening to a pastor one day and he said, you know, having a wedding ring on doesn't turn you into a superhero. That's a great point, right? <laughs> And, and they don't, you know, even if you go through pre-Cana, you know, I, I was brought up Catholic and we went to pre-Cana and the mm -hmm. priest talked about all this stuff. And I, as an aside, I find it interesting that a person that's usually never been married is talking to you about marriage, but that's beside the point. <laughs> <laughs> usually they do have some like lay people talk to you too, which is a good thing. Cool. But they, you take a test, you know, talk about your, how your personality matches up. And that's a good thing. But when you're 21 years old, like I was, you don't fully even understand yourself. And some of your values and, and that are maybe inside you, but they haven't had time to develop yet. Mm -hmm. Things about children and family, you might not even realize yet until years later. Mm. So, um, so you married right. at 21. I was married at 21. Yeah. Really? Well, I was, I was married. I'm married at 24. So yeah. Yeah. yeah and I was divorced I, at 40. Yeah. I was divorced in my mid forties. It was been several years ago now. And I was married 24 years and, 
we had a lot of great years and it just things didn't work out and we had an amicable divorce and it's um I, i'm remarried i'm very i'm a person who wants to be married i'm not a lone wolf kind of person so um i'm guessing more people are like that they want to be with somebody ultimately yeah. i think if, if it's the right if it fits mm -hmm. so but i'm getting off track up I'll, i'll get back to it so with with the affairs the one thing i wanted to mention too is and you you might have seen this that we'll, we'll have people come in and say um the affair caused the divorce well really in my experience from what i've seen mm -hmm. the affair is a symptom it's not the disease The disease is a breakdown in the relationship of one sort or another. The affair is is a symptom showing there's a problem in the marriage. If the marriage was good, there would be nobody. Now, unless we're talking about cheater number two, who is just going to do it no matter what. Mm -hmm. But if the marriage is otherwise healthy, nobody's going to be seeking anything outside the marriage. So right. to me, it's a, a symptom of a breakdown in communication, the sexual relationship, the, mm -hmm. the intimacy in general. You know. That, that leads to somebody seeking intimacy outside. And many times it can be emotional, not just sexual. We always think of the sexual affair part because that's the part that's cool and it gets TV headlines and stuff, or that's what people want to see on the cheaters show. But that I think it's probably far more emotional than people would credit it. You know, there's a lot more communicating that's going on than, than actual sexual stuff. So, yeah. And, you know, I want to talk about that for a second, because I did a poll about women. How do they feel? Would they forgive you more for physical cheating or emotional cheating? Most women said they would they can get over the one night stand. They can't get over the, the, the mental piece, because once you connect with another woman mentally, everything else falls in place, like, you know, obviously with the body and stuff. So. I, when I heard you say that, I was like, wow, yeah, that was interesting that I hear women say that. I mean, cheating is cheating. Don't get me wrong. Right. But of the two lesser evils. Yeah. I, I think I can totally see that. And I've seen that in the clients that have come to talk to us over the years. And this is now thousands of people I've talked to over 20 plus years. And it's, uh, I understand that because the emotional thing means there's been a complete sort of psychic break or emotional break within the spousal relationship that they're going to connect emotionally with another woman or man. Well, that's a, it's, it's one thing if it's like just a sexual need, I suppose, but if it's emotional, you, I can see how people would say that. That's interesting that the survey turned out that way, but I get that. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that makes sense from what I've heard too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so the, the next thing, I'm sorry, do you have a question? I apologize. Oh, no, go ahead. Because I think you're about to get into the second one, which I really want to talk about. I, I really want you to discuss, which is the, uh, I think, growing apart. Yeah, the growing apart thing is interesting. And, and obviously, some of these things tie in these different categories. But growing apart is...